In this video, we will be learning about osmotic diuretics. To understand the mechanism of action of osmotic diuretics, we need to understand, what is osmosis? By definition, osmosis is a process by which the molecules of a solvent and water pass from a solution of low concentration to a solution of high concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. An osmotic diuretic prevents the reabsorption of water and sodium and hence increases urine production or causes diuresis. They are intravenously administered, pharmacologically inactive compounds. They make the blood and renal filtrate more osmolar. Isosorbite and mannitol are two examples of osmotic diuretics. Osmotic diuretics act on the water-permeable parts of the nephron in the kidney. These substances have the ability to affect different body parts. They can be used, for instance, to lower intracranial and intraocular pressure. Osmotic diuretics boost plasma volume without affecting the neurological system since they do not penetrate the blood-brain barrier. In actuality, this is what causes them to behave in a way that reduces the local plasma volume in the nervous system. An osmotic diuretic is an osmotically active drug that is filtered into the renal tubules but not reabsorbed. Diuresis occurs as a result of this substance's ability to hold water in the renal tubules. Mannitol is the sole important osmotic diuretic used in medicine. When glucose concentrations are high enough to prevent the kidneys from reabsorbing it, glucose can also function as an osmotic diuretic. In this video, we will learn how mannitol, an osmotic diuretic, works in our body, its clinical significance, and its mechanism of action in detail. We will also go through drug dosages along with indications and contraindications, so let's get started. Let's start with mechanism of action. Here we are going to talk about the action of mannitol on two bodily systems. First, kidney. When blood reaches the kidney, more particularly, in the proximal convoluted tubule and the descending limb of the loop of Henle in nephron, mannitol, a non-reabsorbable solute, interferes with the normal absorption of water by exerting an opposing osmotic force. Mannitol is filtered into the renal tubules but not reabsorbed, resulting in increased tubular osmolarity. Water that would typically be reabsorbed remains in the tubules as a result of the higher osmolarity of the tubular fluid. As PCT and the descending loop of Henle are freely permeable to water, they remain inactive due to this and result in diuresis or increased urine output. Next, brain. Mannitol is widely used in the management of cerebral edema and raised intracranial pressure from multiple causes. The brain cells experience a slight dehydration as a result of the mannitol. As the mannitol pulls the intracellular water out of the cells and into the bloodstream, the intracellular water in the brain cells leaves the cells and enters the bloodstream. The extra water leaves the skull once it enters the bloodstream. Mannitol is filtered into the urine by the kidneys when it reaches them. Again, drawing water with it, the mannitol causes diuresis or increased urination. Mannitol can be administered intravenously to lower intraocular pressure. The intravascular region now contains mannitol, a novel solute that makes the blood plasma more tonic. Water from the eye's vitreous humor is drawn into the intravascular space by the blood plasma's enhanced tonicity. The kidney excretes the mannitol and related water after they have entered the intravascular area. The intraocular pressure is reduced by the vitreous humor's decreased water content. Here are few indications to use this drug. The primary indications for the use of mannitol include increased intracranial pressure due to cerebral edema and brain masses, increased intraocular pressure that is associated with acute glaucoma and can also be used to induce diuresis and facilitate the excretion of harmful compounds and or metabolites. Now let's also look at adverse effect. Mannitol can cause severe dehydration. Due to the quick fluid changes that occur as water reaches the intravascular compartment of the heart, and heart failure could occur as a result. Because of the movement of free water into the intravascular region, electrolyte imbalances may be caused or made worse. Electrolyte disorders may include hyponatremia, hypokalemia, and hypocalcemia, among others. When using mannitol for medical purposes, it is given intravenously. Mannitol can be found in varying concentrations. 
5% mannitol, that is 5 grams mannitol dissolved in 100 milliliters of fluid, 25% mannitol, that is 25 grams of mannitol dissolved in 100 milliliters of fluid. A commonly encountered solution is 20% mannitol 20 grams of mannitol dissolved in 100 milliliters of fluid. For increased intracranial pressure, dosages typically range from 0.25 gram per kilogram to 2 gram per kilogram administered intravenously over 30 to 60 minutes with effect within 5 to 10 minutes and lasting up to approximately 6 hours. Lastly, it is important to monitor patients while giving mannitol. Monitoring cardiac function is crucial while administering mannitol since fluid changes can hasten heart failure. Monitoring is also necessary for other electrolytes, such as sodium, potassium, and osmolality. If major electrolyte imbalances appear or the osmolality rises to 320 mosm or above, the clinician should discontinue administering mannitol. Finally, urine output needs to be watched. If it doesn't increase after mannitol treatment, mannitol should be stopped, and any potential renal or genitourinary problems should be investigated. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and support us to learn more. Thank you.